This proof makes use of our new derived rules, and it also gives us an opportunity to use the bottom-up strategy for a wedge, which is tilde out for the wedge. Well, let's start at the top. We immediately notice that the main connective for the first line is a tilde. Since it's a tilde, that means we'll be using one of these three great rules, De Morgan's or Arrow Exchange. And in this case, it's an ampersand as the main connective on the inside, and so that means it's the second version of De Morgan's. All right, what's the story that we like to say in this case? We switch the connective, ampersand to wedge, and then distribute the tilde. So we add a tilde to F, and we also add a tilde to I arrow M. All right. I don't like both pi and quiche, which means either I don't like pi or I don't like quiche. Well, that's exactly what we did over here. Justification will be 1 and the name of the rule, De Morgan's. Okay, at this point, we take a look at line 2. What's the main connective on 2? Notice it's not the tilde. On 2, it's the arrow. Be very careful with this. The only time that you use De Morgan's or arrow exchange is when the tilde is the only thing that's completely outside parentheses. In 2, the arrow is the main connective. Well, as I have mentioned, when the arrow or the wedge are the main connective, that's really where all the difficulty comes about. There are two rules you have to think about for arrows. What are they? If you look at the useful chart, which you'll find in several places in the course packet, you'll see that the two rules are arrow out, ooh, that was an ugly arrow right there, arrow out, and modus tollens. Okay, well let's think about arrow out. To do arrow out on line two, clearly we would need to have tilde E and M. Now we don't have it, all right? What would we need to do modus tollens? Well, for modus tollens, you need to have the negation of the Q part. So just looking at line two, we know that what we're supposed to go look for is tilde, tilde, I. Because it's the Q part plus one more tilde. The Q part plus one tilde. And so I take a look. Do I have tilde, tilde, I? No, clearly I don't. Well, so I can't work on line two right now but I just did exactly the thinking that's important. Check for arrow out and modus tollens. Okay, so now it's time to go to line three. Ah, here we have the wedge as the main connective, and that's the other tricky place. And what are the two rules you should think of for this? Disjunctive argument and wedge out. You're much more likely to use disjunctive argument, the new derived rule, than you are wedge out, but you do have to think about them both. Okay, for disjunctive argument, it's a great intuitive rule. P or Q, at least one of those has to be true. If it's not P, it's Q. If it's not Q, it's P. All right, so I look at this rule, I, I look at this line, and knowing this rule, I know what I have to go look for. I have to either find tilde, tilde F, that's the P part plus one tilde. Or I have to find tilde tilde I arrow M. And I look for both of them and I say, yeah, I obviously don't have either one of those. Well, so unfortunately I cannot do disjunctive argument right now. What about wedge out? Well, you remember wedge out, right? That's that three line rule that says P wedge Q, P arrow R, Q arrow R, if you find all three of those things, what do you get to write? R. This is the wedge out rule. And so when I see that I have a wedge here, I have to go look and say, do I have a conditional that begins with tilde F and points to anything? And I look and I say, no, I don't have it. Well, I also would need to find tilde I arrow M, arrow something, and I clearly don't have that either, so I can't do wedge out. All right. The moral is, I am now stuck at the top. But I thought about everything that I needed to think about. And that's what the useful chart does, is it tells you exactly what thoughts to have as you're looking at a line. 
Okay, so we're stuck at the top, it's time to go to the bottom. We see we have a wedge at the bottom, and the bottom-up strategy for a wedge turns out to be tilde out, our box rule. So I'm going to make a big box here that occupies all the available space. I'm not very good at drawing nice neat boxes on this on this piece of tablety hardware stuff. But it's a PA for tilde out. Normally we have been using tilde out when we have just a single capital letter at the bottom. But what we're going to do is just pretend that this is a single capital letter and assume the opposite of it. I think the best way to assume the opposite of a wedge is to take that entire formula and just write it in the center of the space at the top of the box, just like that. And then add parentheses plus another tilde. Notice if you just drop the tilde, then all you've done is change the value for f. So if you wrote f wedge d at the top, that would not be sufficient you really have to have tilde, tilde f wedge d. Of course, at the bottom of the box, we'll have a contradiction symbol. Okay, so stuck at the top with a wedge at the bottom, this is what you do every time. Now, here's the payoff. What's the main connective for line four? It's a tilde. Well, that means we're gonna to get to do De Morgan's on it. Every time you assume the opposite of a wedge, you're going to have a tilde on the outside with a wedge on the inside, and that means the first version of De Morgan's. And so that's what we'll do. So I'm going to write, well, switch the connective, ampersand to wedge to ampersand, and then distribute the tilde, tilde, tilde F, and tilde D for De Morgan's. And the payoff is that that's an ampersand, so now we even get to break it up. And we get tilde tilde f and also tilde d. So that's 5 ampersand out done twice. Fantastic. All right, let's check off a couple of things. We've worked on 1, we've worked on 4 and 5. Now we have to slow down and look at the other parts again. Over and over again, when I see people get stuck on these proofs, it's because they're not slowing down and just looking at the lines and thinking about the relevant rules. Okay, back up to two. Arrow's the main connective. For arrow out, we would need to have tilde E and M. Yeah, don't have it. For modus tollens, well, we said we would need tilde tilde I. Don't have that either. Okay, look at line three. Wedge is the main connective. For DA, we said we would need to have tilde tilde f. Ah, we're in luck. Tilde tilde f has shown up. So remember, here's the way to think about this. Either p or q has to be true, one part or the other. But what we see on line 6 is that the p part is not true. It's p or q, but it's not p. Therefore, it must be the Q part, tilde I arrow M. And notice it's that whole thing, tilde I arrow M, which comes down here. That's the value of putting in the circles and the squares. This is P, this is Q. The tilde is just part of the Q. I emphasize this because I know it's these extra tildes which bug people. What's the justification for this going to be? Well, of course, it's two lines, and we used line three, but we also used six. So let's check them both off, and let's write three, six, DA over here, just like that. Okay, next step. Well, notice what showed up on line eight. It's tilde I arrow M. The tilde is the main connective. In fact, this is a pretty obvious arrow exchange, isn't it? So the arrow turns into an ampersand. You bring down the P part, just as it's written, and you add a tilde to the Q part. So I ampersand tilde M is what we get, and that's eight arrow exchange. That's very nice because since that's an ampersand, we should break it up. And so I will put I on line 10, 
I'll put tilde M on line 11, 9 ampersand out, done twice. Okay, more things that we can check off. We checked off 3 and 6, let's check off 8 and 9. And now, well, we're looking for a contradiction, and I don't see one yet, but notice we haven't worked on line 2. So once again, we have to go back and just think through the relevant rules. I really can't emphasize enough at how much this process is really just about looking at the same lines over and over again and looking for the relevant parts, waiting for them to show up. Okay, to do arrow out, I would have to have tilde E and M. Yeah, still don't have that. To do modus tollens, I said I'd have to have tilde tilde I. I still don't have that. However, when you're looking for tilde tilde I, you also have to look for just I by itself because we have double negation. When I see line 10, that single I, I am inspired to turn it into tilde tilde I by 10 double negation. Because I know that if I'm going to do modus tollens on line 2, I have to have tilde tilde I. I mean, I is close, but if you're really going to be strict about things, the rule modus tollens says you have to have one more tilde than what you're working against. So, I saw 2 and I said I need to have tilde tilde I. I went and looked and I saw I and then I built tilde tilde I. We can put in the circles and squares up here too. We can say, look, there's P, arrow, Q. I built tilde the Q part. What do I get to write? Tilde the P part. Okay, so what would that be? Well, the P part already had one tilde, so what I'm going to write is tilde tilde E ampersand M. And that, of course, will be 212 modus tollens. There it is. That's an M. 212 modus tollens, tilde, tilde, E, and M. Well, notice here's a line that has two tildes on it. And when I have two tildes outside parentheses, that's always a good thing to get rid of. So I'm going to drop those two tildes and get E ampersand M. And now I'm wishing I had just a tiny bit more space because it's gotten very tight here. But that was 13 double negation. Drop off the two tildes. And do you see, I'm very close to a contradiction. All I need to do is break line 14 up into two parts. But because I'm out of space, I'm only going to take the M out. I'm not even going to worry about E. And write 14 ampersand out. Now I have a contradiction of M and tilde M. So on line 16, here's my contradiction. It is M ampersand tilde M. And that, of course, would be 11 and 15 ampersand N. And success! We have completed the proof. It was a wedge at the bottom. And the strategy for a wedge at the bottom is tilde out. And so it's going to be lines 4 through 16 tilde out. And there it is. All right, so we, we used quite a number of the derived rules. In fact, I think we used them all except for repetition. And we talked about the bottom-up strategy for wedge. Assume the opposite of a wedge, always put it in parentheses, and add a tilde, and look for a contradiction.